Hi guys! What are you doing? Yeah, my notes off. You've got notes as well, have you? Yeah. Do they actually relate to Nick Cave's 20,000 days on Earth? Yeah. Okay then. We need to do a sound test to make sure that I can actually be heard. Why don't you just come closer? What notes have you got? Show me your notes. Do they look like a game? No. <laughs> Tonight we went to see Nick Cave's 20,000 Days on Earth and we were in the cinema for three and a half hours and my knees were ready to creak. Three hours fifteen. <laughs> yeah, there was a little bit of an introduction from Edith Bowman and then it went into the film and then after the film there was a Q&A section with him, the directors, um, his band and Ray Winstone and then there was some singing of his songs in between as well and it was it was a bit of an odd um, atmosphere wasn't it really I think especially at the start because when Edith Bowman was still talking the lights were up and you could see everybody around you and it almost felt as though we were a community together watching Nick Cave I don't think anybody other than us in there was under 50 were they? There were a couple of people but it was quite an Quite an elderly group. Yeah, but I felt quite comfortable in there. We were on the back seat and I felt quite comfortable to take notes, which I've never done for a film before, but it just, it seemed like that sort of film that you would discuss in a film club or if you were at a book club and it was a book. It seems like it needs discussing. So I was making notes and the first note I made was on the size of his nipples as he was getting out of bed at the beginning. This is going to be a great review if I'm just talking about nipples. But they were really erect, really noticeable, took it away from the fact that his wife was sitting behind him. What were her nipples like? <laughs> well, she was well hidden, she was buried deep into the pillows. And I have to say, his jewellery put me off him. He ended up looking like a pimp with the amount of gold jewellery he was wearing. <laughs> he got big dangly gold chains in his signet rings on. And what was the song? Yeah, my next note say sip sip sip. What was that song for? It was something like sip 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 and I'll slip slip slip. Anyway, it sounded like it'd been written by a five year old. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm criticising Nick Cave, your hero. How does that make you feel? I'll cope. I mean, he's allowed an opinion. I know, but he's, he's godly, which he kept mentioning throughout the film. I think he's got a god complex going on. And then I took all of these notes as well. In fact, the first note on this one is that he's got a god complex. I don't know how many times he must have mentioned in the film that he has to be godlike. No, you're saying that when that there's a moment on stage when you're performing live where when you get caught up in the moment, you feel you feel almost godlike. Yeah, that was one of the things, but he mentioned it a few times. Enough for me to write down god complex. Um, a lot of his songs are, are about religion. Yeah, that was an interesting topic to write about, I suppose. Yeah, but I, I found that quite interesting because he talks about the only time in his life he's been religious was when he was doing drugs and he'd go to church before he did drugs. So to understand that he hasn't been religion, a religious since then, but knowing that all of his songs are quite religious, it's an odd topic to sing about. And he's, he, um, throughout the film, he talks to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist asks him what his biggest fear is and he said that his biggest fear is losing his memory although later in the film he does say that he fears his biggest fear is the weather so he can't decide what his biggest fear is but he said that his biggest fear was losing his memory and I think that the directors of the film portrayed this by as he was driving around he would have people from his past in the car with him talking to him but you weren't ever quite sure of whether they were there or if they were imaginary. I think I've likened them to um, the ghosts of his past and that, that was him bringing up his memories that he's fearful of losing. So he had three people in the car. He had Kylie Minogue and Ray Winston and who was the third person, do you know? Bad seeds, bad members. No, how many people have left them? Because then there was also the guy that was playing with him tonight as well. What was his name? There have been dozens over the years. Though. Yeah, there must have been over a dozen members of So who was playing tonight? Warren Ellis, who's been been with him more or less since forever. They do a lot of movie soundtracks and things like that together. Yeah, and 
the other guy, the really cool guy, he said he was it was too hot to be cool. His name was Bob. Oh. Well, Bob reminded me of Robbie Williams returning to Take That and Jerry Hallowell returning to the Spice Girls. Right, what's the song where he's talking about Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus? I don't know. What kind of a fan are you? Well, it doesn't matter. But, yeah, okay, do you know what that song was about? Because he played it twice. So am I going to have to like Google this because I, I just wanted to know what the fuck. He was explaining about his first sexual encounter and um, that seemed pretty fucked up but he remembers that the girl that it was with had dark hair and very white fair face although admittedly she painted it white but do you think that reflects on his wife because later in the film he said that his wife had dark hair and very fair face mm -hmm. oh my god really do you think there was any connection have you read Lolita no. so you can't even tell me if that was a theme within the, the film either he just um, explains how his dad read Lolita to him, the first chapter of Lolita, and explained to him how it was very creatively written and artful. Do you think he compares himself to things like that, to things that his dad taught him? Maybe, I guess because he lost his dad at a relatively young age. Yeah. He still, he never had that opportunity to impress him with his, with his art, I guess. But he, he did explain also that his dad was there for a couple of his shows and just before he died as well he was at one of his shows. Lolita. Very dark book. Is it? You see I don't know anything about it. It's about the guy who becomes involved with a 12 year old girl. How, what were your feelings throughout the film? Were you impressed with the film? Yeah. The other day I asked you if you were more of a fan of Nick Cave than you were of his music. Has, that, has your answer changed to that? because you couldn't decide which one you preferred. Oh, I think it's all within the news. But has your opinion of him changed tonight? No, not really. I've never, I've never read any of, his, um, any of his books. Oh yeah, that was a question I was going to ask you actually. Um, I keep meaning to, but... Are you aware of any of his other books? Like the one that... What's his involvement with Ray Winston? Because there seems to be a book connection with Ray Winston there. Ray Winston's works on films that Nick Kay have written the script for. Have you seen any of those films? No. Uh, if I have, I don't know it. Oh, okay. So that's possible. See, my impression of Nick Cave beforehand was quite a sexy, older rocker, very confident in himself, didn't want the outside world coming in. He was a little bit cocksure of himself. But I think this film showed him in a vulnerable light, and I think he's quite a recluse, somebody who wants to hide away from the world a little bit. Yeah, it's weird for an artist, because they all crave attention, that's why they're artists in the first place, but, mm. you know, he, he can't stand being interviewed. Absolutely. He can you by the looks of No, we've got that in common, I suppose. Yeah, and you could see during the Q&A session that he was completely uncomfortable with it after about five minutes. Until Ray Winston came on, and then he was just brought out of his shell. They had a wonderful chemistry. Yeah, he was quite happy to sit, uh, sit by the piano and uh, yeah. keep out away. There was um, a song that it was a little bit like a lullaby to me, it, it kind of made me a little bit... You say that Nick and Warren have done a lot of work together. How true do you think it is what Edith said about them being a true double act? Do you see it more as Nick and the Bad Seas or do you see it as Nick and Warren and a couple of other people? There was an outtake from the film of Warren playing the violin and it was beautiful except for all I could think of was Mole Man from The Simpsons because he'd got his trousers pulled up really high on the second outtake where he's in the car with Kylie and he's talking about how his dog died and she finds it hilarious and I couldn't understand why she found it hilarious when he's telling this sad story Did you notice? He wasn't driving Yeah He was continuously looking down at the floor or at Kylie as the car was moving and it was the same in a later outtake with Ray Winston well, He wasn't even moving the steering wheel No, that's what I was going to say, when he was with Ray his hand was just on top of the steering wheel continuously not moving even though he was clearly going around corners in the final outtake with Ray Winston I think that was probably the funniest bit of the whole thing and I wish that had been kept in the film except for the film was rather melancholy. Melancholy. It's melancholy. What is it? Melancholy. Oh fuck. <laughs> 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 it's 
it's quite sad. So yeah, it was quite a sad, dark film, but this clip with Ray Winston, you just, his face, Nick's face just lit up. I, I really wish there'd been more between them because their friendship was just lovely to see and it, it seemed like that's when he was at his happiest. Well, I imagine he gets treated much differently by someone like him who does everybody else he needs because they're all all trying to suck up to him. Or, yeah, or I mean, in the... Instead of this, this artist, whereas Ray Winston just gives the impression that he doesn't care who anyone is. He yeah, the same. I love Ray Winston. Um, and he does seem to seem to pull something out of Nick Cave that no one else in the uh, in the film did. Yeah. During the Q and A section, they asked for questions via Twitter, and I did send one in asking him how he managed to make his nipples look so erect. But I also sent him one, as you were just discussing, I also sent him one asking how he does cope with seeing fans in the street. Because we're going to Brighton this weekend, and if we manage to see him and bump into him, how are you going to react? And how will he react? How does he cope with being such a, a godly figure in people's minds? But he's just Joe Bloggs. And he'll be out with his family, no doubt. And how does he cope with... Because he wants to stay out of the limelight. What if he's just in Sainsbury's shopping and you see him and what do we do? I don't know, then he's just staring and then that's it. I saw Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses. Who? And... Oh. <laughs> I know Guns N' Roses, just not the person. Where did you see him? Face play, in some motorway services. And I didn't go over and say hello because I didn't think it was him. And then I looked on the internet and his band were playing in Brighton or travelling from Newcastle to Brighton that day. Oh, so okay. it was him. Cool. Do you want to say goodbye? Mm. Well, then we can carry on talking all night then. And I can tell you want that. If I say goodbye, do you want to tell them to subscribe? Go on. Okay, subscribe, thumbs it up, comment below. Bye. <laughs>